All right, y'all, welcome back to math class. So what are we gonna do in math class today? What do you need to do in order to be successful? Well, you need to connect an area model to the standard algorithm for multiplying two fractions. That's right, there's a lot in there. We're gonna multiply fractions and we're gonna use area models to make the algorithm make sense. We're gonna multiply two fractions together using the algorithm. And we'll tell you what that algorithm is later on. And we're gonna calculate products of fractions in mathematical and real world problems. So those are our three big goals today. To get us started, let's start out with the warm up. And what you're doing is plotting each of these values on this number line. Pause the video, plot the numbers, and hit play when you're ready to check your answer. You've hit play, which means you're ready to see where these numbers belong. These are the approximate locations of these numbers. Check and see, did you get them in the right spot? Some things to pay attention to. Seven halves should be exactly halfway between three and four because it's the same thing as three and a half. Four and one third should be closer to four than three. And one fourth should be closer to zero than one. This would be one half. Be sure that one fourth is to the left of where one half ought to be. All right, nice job getting started. Let's look at today's essential question. You've already used area models to represent products. What we wanna talk about today is how can we use those to represent products of fractions? So here we have a part of a part. Previously in elementary school, you used an area model to represent products, to determine factors and to list multiples of given numbers. And you also did that this year in sixth grade during the first week of school. So in the same way that you did that, you can use area models to represent whole number multiplication and area models can represent fraction multiplication. Let's take a look at this example. Consider one fourth by one half. This model shows one fourth times one half. Where do you see that in the model? I'm gonna pause the video. What I want you to do is talk with your partner and say, where is one fourth on here? Where is one half? Where is one fourth times one half in the model? Hit pause, talk, and in two minutes, hit play. I know you just had a good conversation. Let's talk first about where we see one fourth. This part that I'm shading represents one fourth of the big rectangle. You'll see that it's divided into one, two, three, four rows. I shaded one of those four rows. Now, this part right here represents one half of the big rectangle. The big rectangle is divided into two columns, and this pink part is one of those two columns. It represents one half. So if I look at the area that overlaps both of these sections, the area that was shaded two times, this part right here, this is the product of one fourth times one half. This is in fact one half of one fourth or one fourth of one half. And that's where I can see the product of those two fractions in the area model. It's what I get if I multiply one fourth times one half. Let's try it out with some different fractions. Actually, why don't you see if you can do it with a partner? Here's a model that's all set up for you. In this direction, it's divided into thirds. One, two, three. And in this section, it's divided into fifths. One, two, three, four, five. Use those tick marks and the rectangle to model two thirds times three fifths. Set a timer in three minutes. I wanna see your diagrams and see how you modeled this product of these two fractions. So let's talk about your diagrams. First, I'm gonna go ahead and draw thirds on my diagram. And then I'm gonna shade two of those thirds to represent two thirds. There we go. That is two thirds. And you used fraction models so much in elementary school, you're very familiar with that. Now let's do three fifths. Let's see, I'm gonna divide this into fifths using columns, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, that's fifths, okay. Um, I need to shade three of those columns. One, two, three, there we go. That's three fifths. 
Now, where is the product of two thirds times three fifths? Well, that is the section that is outlined twice. I mean, shaded twice. It's this part right here. And what do you think? What fraction is represented by that section? Well, I notice it has one, two, three, four, five, six sections out of a total of 15. So the product of 2 thirds times 3 fifths is 6 over 15. Or if you wanted to simplify that, you could be fancy and say it's 2 fifths. Now the next question asks us to show how the algorithm for modeling two fractions um, less than one gives the same product as the model. So let's just talk about exactly what the word algorithm means. It really just talks about a process or maybe a set of instructions. It's a way of doing something that you can do over and over and over again and it always works. It's just a set of instructions that works to get a task done. That's an algorithm. And there is a set of instructions that you can use whenever you need to multiply two fractions. Here's how it works. Let's take our example. We had 2 thirds times 3 fifths. The algorithm or the process that you can use to multiply these two fractions together is just to multiply the numerators and multiply the denominators. In other words, multiply 2 times 3. Those are your values in the numerator. 2 times 3 is 6. Then multiply your denominators. 3 times 5. 3 times 5 is 15. Check it out. That is the result that we had using our model. And of course, we can simplify this as well to get 2 fifths. What I want you to see is whether you use the model or the algorithm which is just multiplying the numerator times the numerator and the denominator times the denominator, you get the same product. They are the same process. So here's some work for you to do with a partner. What I want you to do is pause the video and spend three minutes building this model. Now there is something a little bit trickier here because we're going to be working with mixed fractions, but you can do it. So think about it with your partner. What does your table look like? Here's what my table looks like. It would be, hang on, this is two and a half. Let me start from the bottom. That's two and a half. And this is three and a half. So my table, just gonna cut a piece off there and a piece off there. And that's my table. So it's two and a half by three and a half. Does yours look like mine or does it look different? How's it different? How's it the same? Do you think our tables have the same area? Well, now that we have our table, we really wanna know what portion of the tiles will Brie use to cover the tabletop. You see how she has some extra ones over here? She doesn't need those tiles, right? We wanna know what portion she's actually gonna use. I want you just to table that question though for a minute. That means don't answer it just right now. We're gonna answer it later. First, we're gonna skip ahead a little bit and think about um, another dilemma that Brie needs to deal with. You see, Brie doesn't wanna cut the tiles. She doesn't wanna cut those one foot by one foot tiles. She probably doesn't have a tool to do that at her house. I don't have a tool that can cut tiles at my house. So what she's gonna do instead is she's gonna buy smaller size square tiles that she can use to cover the entire tabletop. So think about this. Here's, here's the uh, model of her table again. And remember that we're only going to use part of that. How can you divide this up to model um, how Brie can get her tiles on her table without having to cut any tables? Like, what, what size tile should she buy? Pause the video and work with a partner. I want you to work on this task for four minutes. Set a timer and do some work. All right, so here's that table again. Now remember, we don't want to have to cut any tiles at all. And right now we're going to have to slice some tiles up. So what would be the right size to not have to cut any? If we didn't want to cut any tiles at all, we would need tiles that are, um, that are, a, 
measuring one half by one half. So we would divide them up like this. And each of those tiles that was one foot by one foot is now going to be divided into four separate tiles. Here, I've divided up my model. This is going to be a lot easier for Brie because she doesn't have to cut. And it's also going to be easier for us because here's our two and a half. Here's our three and a half. Now it's very easy for us to see what portion of that original set of tiles is not used. At this point, we can answer most of these questions. We can describe our model. We know what size tile she should buy. Instead of buying one foot by one foot, she should buy one half foot by one half foot. We can count the number of tiles in this pink box. That's the number of tiles of that size that she needs. Now here's the tricky one. Can you show that the area represented in the model is the same as the product of the side lengths? Spend some time thinking about that. And in a minute, we're going to return to this question. What portion of the tiles will Brie use to cover the tabletop? Before continuing with the video, pause and talk. Pause and think. And if you're ready to continue talking about this tile, then hit play again. All right, so we said what size tile should she buy? She should buy tiles that are one half foot by one half foot. And looking at our diagram, this square is one square foot. There are four tiles in that square foot. That means that the area of one of these tiles is one fourth square feet. So the area of one of these tiles here, each one of these is going to be one fourth of a square foot. So one fourth, one fourth, one fourth, one fourth, one fourth. Now, how many tiles that are each one, four, uh, one fourth square feet does she need? So if you count them all up, or if you multiply one, two, three, four, five times one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you'll find that she needs 30 foot tiles, 35 tiles that are each one fourth square feet. So we could say that she needs 35 over four square feet. She needs 35 fourths. Now, most people, when they go to Lowe's or Home Depot, prefer mixed numbers to um, improper fractions. So let's talk about this. Four goes into 35 eight times. So the 35 fourths is the same as eight and three fourths. So that would be the area of the table. She needs 35 tiles that are all a quarter, um, one fourth square feet. That's the same as 35 fourths. That's the same as eight and three fourths square feet. That's the area of the table. We found the area of the table. Remember earlier, we wanted to know what portion of the table of the tiles that Brie will use to cover the tabletop. Well, what if she bought enough tiles to cover this whole area? What portion would she need? We can see now that she needs 35 tiles. How many extras would be in this whole box if she had to buy this many? All we have to do is count up the space that we didn't use. And that looks like that would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 10, 11, 12, 13. So there were 13 extra tiles. So she used 35. She had 13 extras. That means that with the little tiles, the ones that she didn't have to cut, there would be 48 of them in that box. So what portion did she use? She used 35 at 48 of the tiles that were in the box. You are doing a great job thinking through all this math and thinking about how models connect to algorithms. We talked a little bit about algorithms before and about how we can use them to multiply fractions. Let's try it now with mixed numbers. 
because the last problem here asks us to show that the area represented in the model is the same as the product of the side lengths. In order to show that that's true, all we need to do is multiply those two side lengths together and see what the product is. That means we need to multiply three and a half times two and a half. Now, when you were in fifth grade, you knew how to turn mixed numbers into improper fractions. Let, re let me remind you how that works. You multiply the whole number times the denominator, so three times two, and you add the numerator, so three times two plus one. That's all gonna be over your original denominator, which is a two. Okay, so that's that one. Three times two is six. Six plus one is seven. That means this fraction is seven halves. Now let's do the other one. For this one, we have two times two, that's four, plus one, that's five, all over two. So five over two. That's the only extra step for multiplying mixed numbers. You just have to turn them into improper fractions first, and then you treat them just like regular old fractions. In other words, you multiply seven halves times five halves by multiplying seven times five and two times two. Try it out, see what you get. Do you get the same answer that we did using the area model? Pause the video and try this with a partner and see if your answer is the same or if it's different. Hopefully what you're gonna find is that you get the same result either way.